is News 3 Now at 6. Thank you for joining us tonight. Town of Medicine Police is releasing more information today about Monday night's homicide as they continue the search for the killer. Well, Maddie O'Neill has been following this case since it started. She's live in the 2600 block of Badger Lane. With what we know so far, Maddie. Police are looking for any information that may lead them to the shooter who they say is still at large, but they aren't able to tell us today if they've identified any people of uh, interest. They are confirming that Shaw, the victim, was a caretaker at a group home on this block. While that home is located in the city of Madison, police say Shaw was found lying by a vehicle just across the street on the east side, which is in the town of Madison. Police Chief Gregory Scott doesn't believe anyone in that group home or the surrounding neighborhood are in specific danger, saying the shooting was targeted, but he's asking anyone who was there Monday night, who has security footage in that area, or who has been in contact with Shaw recently, get a hold of police. What you may have seen may be minor and unimportant to you, but as we put this case together and start collecting the information, every little piece is important. Gregory says Shaw had family in both the Madison area and Chicago area. Now here in this neighborhood, there has been extra police patrol. We've seen a few town of Madison police cars, as is protocol, according to the chief. Anyone with information can get a hold of Madison area crime stoppers. Maddie, thank you. City of Madison Alders have approved more than $5 million in spending for safety improvements for a dangerous intersection on the city's southeast side. This is at the Highway 1218 intersection with Mill Pond Road and at County Highway AB near the Ahara Hills Golf Course and the Dane County Landfill. District 16 Alder Michael Tierney says the safety changes are necessary, especially given that Ho-Chunk Nation's casino expansion plans will draw more visitors to that area and more children and families will be living in the area as a new neighborhood development in the McFarland School District is soon built. Remember uh, driving through this way um, and six different weekends in a row coming across accidents each and every time. And the last one, we unfortunately, uh, it was a fatality and a member of our city engineering staff was killed. Uh, so it's, it's clearly something that we need to address. It's long, long overdue. The city of Madison is partnering with the DOT, Dane County, Town of Cottage Grove, and Ho-Chunk Nation for the project expected to total, in total, cost $37 million. That includes creating frontage roads and overpass roundabouts, all to prohibit highway crossings. Let's check your first Warren forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. It was a pretty nice day today, Charlotte, but it'll turn cold tonight and even colder over the next few nights. There's a frost advisory in effect tonight. North and west of Wisconsin Dells for Juneau and Adams counties from 3 a.m. until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. And we have an alert day in the forecast for Saturday morning when a widespread frost and a hard freeze is possible with temperatures dipping into the upper 20s. Today, on visible cloud track, morning sunshine gave way to some clouds that popped up during the afternoon. There have been a few scattered showers, but most of those have been to the west in Iowa. Might see a sprinkle or two into parts of southwestern Wisconsin over the next hour or two, but otherwise skies will clear out overnight. Temperatures right now are pretty comfortable, generally in the lower to middle 60s. Look for temperatures to drop into the lower 40s by early tomorrow morning in Madison, upper 30s to our north and west. High temperatures tomorrow will be in the lower 60s with partly sunny skies, but colder weather arrives on Friday and continues through the weekend. I'll have more details and weather in a few minutes. New numbers out today show a multi-million dollar drop in tax revenue for the state of Wisconsin. A memo sent to lawmakers says the pandemic has severely impacted the state's economy and tax collections. Amy Reed joins us live to show us how this could impact Madison schools. Amy. As students and schools gear up for graduation, they also have to look to next year. Their finances depend on state money, and with that being uncertain, it put the school districts in a difficult situation. It's been a lot of sleepless nights, I'm not going to lie. Um, this is not an easy task um, that's being asked of any public school system. Much like us all, Madison schools are facing uncertainty. They're making cuts to make this year's budget work with next year's budget looming. For that, they're planning for anything from zero to $9 million lost. And we sure hope that's not the situation the state is putting public schools in. Jason Stein, the research director at the nonpartisan Wisconsin Policy Forum, has analyzed state budgets and said school districts are the number one thing the state of Wisconsin spends money on using about a third of its spending. It's going to be very difficult for uh, state officials to 
adjust their budget without impacting schools in some way. But still, there are uncertainties even in the uncertainties. With tax collection moved to July 15th, it will be months before the state can truly measure the impact on revenue. And we don't know what the cuts lawmakers will likely be forced to make will look like. The challenge for school districts, though, is they don't they don't have answers to any, any of these questions yet, but they have to start putting together their preliminary budgets. They have to uh, hire and contract with teachers for the fall, and they have to do it really under a cloud of uncertainty. Madison Metropolitan said it's going to try and keep whatever cuts it can from impacting students in the classroom, whatever that classroom will look like. We always aim to um, protect the classroom, um, and that will be um, our first hope that we can uh, protect the classroom first, looking at reductions, what reductions we can make at central office uh, first, um, and then move from there. The state is getting some money from the federal government, but currently the guidance says that that shouldn't be used to make up for any revenue shortfalls. Now, a memo from the Legislative Fiscal Bureau today said that that guidance could change. There are ongoing discussions on that, and there could be more funding passed on the federal level that would allow states to make up their budgets. Amy Reed, live in Madison tonight. Amy, thank you. News 3 Now is partnering with Madison Schools to give the 2020 senior class a graduation to remember. The district has canceled in-person graduation and will instead televise four hour-long virtual celebrations. Officials say the production will celebrate students from all six public high schools and will air during primetime hours. The ceremonies will air right here on News Street Now, June 12th and 13th. And we'll share more details about times for each school when we get closer to that event. We're approaching 9,000 confirmed coronavirus cases in Wisconsin. Milwaukee and Brown counties are seeing the highest numbers in the state. Milwaukee at more than 3,500 cases and Brown at more than 1,600. 309 new cases were reported today and nine more people have died from complications, making for a total of 362 deaths. Today, 8% of new tests were found to be positive. That is a slight decrease from yesterday's 8.6%. However, there has not been a downward trend in that percentage for 14 consecutive days, which is required as part of the governor's Badger Bounce Back program. Two Rock County communities are now in the top 10 nationally for one coronavirus statistic. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us live with what these numbers could mean. Adam? Oh, Charlotte, as of today, both Janesville and Beloit ranked ninth in the highest average daily growth of cases in the country. Now, according to the New York Times, Janesville and Beloit had a current daily growth rate of 9%, while cases have been doubling on average every eight days. Now, those I've talked to today so far say that this can be due to both outbreaks at Hormel and Birdseye paired with a recent expansion of testing, although they're unsure of how much longer this high daily growth rate will continue. And coming up tonight on News 3 Now at 10, an even deeper dive into these numbers, as well as an interview with a UW professor whose team's been tracking how well certain Wisconsin counties, like Rock County, have been doing at following the Safer at Home order by using GPS data. All right, Adam, thank you. Now about a month after Wisconsin's presidential primary, it remains largely unknown just how many people contracted coronavirus at the polls. Public health experts say a lack of testing, not enough contact tracing, difficulty pinpointing where a person got infected, all make it nearly impossible to quantify the impact of holding the in-person election. There's also the fact that some people are infected but have no symptoms and therefore don't get tested. Starting on Monday, you'll be able to pick up a new book from your local Madison Library, Curbside. Now, here's how it works. Just go online or call them and place a hold on the book you'd like. Then, once it's ready, you schedule an appointment time to pick it up at a library near you. A staff member will place your book in the trunk of your vehicle or back seat. Library officials say the governor's safer at home order prohibits libraries from transferring books to different locations right now so you can only choose from what's available at the library near you. We may not have the exact book that you want in, but we might have three other books like it or two other books by the same author. And so staff will assist customers with that, um, with that conversation, finding out what library they'd like to pick their books up at, seeing if the materials that they want are in that particular library. Library staff members will be wearing masks and following public safety guidelines. They ask customers to stay in their vehicles. If you're walking to the library or biking, you can still pick up your books. They'll simply be left on a table outside for you. 
At 6, Dane County Regional Airport officials say they will begin testing new PFAS mitigation technology. A recent series of tests identified high levels of the harmful chemicals in known areas and also areas that had not been identified before. The airport is launching a new pilot project in an area near Truax Field that contains 59% of the PFAS compounds. If the new mitigation technology works, it may be used in other areas of the airport as well. Next at 6, you may be eating out more often to support local restaurants, but if you are using a third-party delivery app, the benefit to your local chef gets a little complicated. We'll explain after the break. Don't miss Customer Appreciation Days this Friday and Saturday at hy -Vee. Get $10 off when you spend $150 and use your hy -Vee Fuel Saver Plus Perks card. That's $10 off when you spend $150 and use your card this Friday and Saturday, only at hy -Vee. Coming together makes us stronger, and Ford is built to lend a hand. Contact your Ford dealer, an essential part of your community, to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Find out more at Ford.com. Right now, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months, plus three months deferred payments on select 2020 Ford models. The world may be shut down, but Mother Nature won't wait. Normal wear and tear on your home won't wait either. So if you need a home improvement, we're here to help. With exclusive offers to save you money on roofing, siding, windows, gutters, and design services. All with zero down, zero percent interest, and no monthly payments for six months. Plus free virtual consultations from the comfort and safety of your own home. Visit FryConstruction.com for exclusive money-saving offers and contact us today. Spring is in the air. The birds are back, the days are warmer, and spring blossoms are starting to pop. Beautiful, colorful, delicate flowers. This spring, let the outdoor living experts at the Bruce Company help you bring this season to life. Colorful plants, stylish garden art, and the latest trends in outdoor furniture. The Bruce Company has everything you need to start your spring off right. So what's your dream this spring? Find it at the Bruce Company on Parmenter Street in Middleton. Your outdoor living experts. Don't miss Customer Appreciation Days this Friday and Saturday at hy -Vee. Get $10 off when you spend $150 and use your hy -Vee Fuel Saver Plus Perks card. That's $10 off when you spend $150 and use your card this Friday and Saturday, only at hy -Vee. New at 6, Overture Center for the Arts will no longer host its annual Frosty Ball Gala. Organizers say they reviewed fundraising activities and found that in addition to the pandemic, large-scale fundraising galas will be more challenging to pull off in the future. A news release also said recent participant feedback suggested a refresh of the gala was needed. The development team is working on fundraising ideas that can be tied to existing events and benefit free and low-cost community programs. Today, in honor of National Nurses Day, a local firehouse sub shop is partnering with a local business owner to say thank you. Firehouse yeah, Subs franchisee you, Eric Irwin partnered with Patrick Doonan, a U.S. Army military police veteran and owner of Landfill Reduction and Recycling. Doonan is also a pancreatic cancer survivor who was treated at UW Hospital. He wanted to do something to get back to our local heroes, so he sponsored 50 boxed lunches for nurses at UW Hospital. 50 first responders involved in the police escort there also received a free meal. This pandemic has greatly boosted business for some and severely hindered it for others. This has certainly been the case between restaurants and third-party delivery services. Jamie Perez looked into how the two work together and against one another. Jamie? So the relationship between the two is kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand, you have these services that are getting a huge amount of business right now and they're employing a lot of people. And that means that technically these restaurants are also getting more business. But on the other side of things, these restaurants say that these services are actually taking business away from them at a time when they need it most. Restaurants are now relying on us to use curbside and takeout. Yes, it's true. They For Patrick Reha, who owns Beef Butter Barbecue, it's one of the main driving forces that keeps his restaurant going. That's why we prefer to see our customers. We do have a drive-up service that we prefer them to use. But if they need delivery, 
Eat Street and other companies do provide a valuable service. Many restaurants who do not offer delivery on their own rely on third-party delivery services. And while a lot of the time it's helping the restaurant manage orders and staff, sometimes it can be a double-edged sword. It's seen as a bit of a necessary evil. Christine Hilmer is the CEO at the Wisconsin Restaurants Association. She said some third-party delivery services are listing restaurant menus on their site as an option for customers without the restaurant agreeing to be a partner of theirs. Some of these third-party deliveries will grab old menus, they'll put it on their website, and then they will purport that, oh, we deliver for these restaurants, and there's no relationship with the restaurant. Inaccurate menus, inaccurate prices, and the restaurants get shorthanded. So you might think that you are supporting your local restaurant, and it's not necessarily supporting them because sometimes the dollars that the restaurant is given doesn't even cover their expenses. I spoke with the CEO of Eat Street, a delivery service based here in Madison. He said his company always gets full permission from restaurants to establish that partnership where both sides reap the benefits. There are companies in our industry that will list restaurants menus without prior permission. That is not something we do at Eat Street. We want to make sure we work with each individual restaurant to make sure that they are successful and they want to be part of the platform. Thank you. Have a good day. Restaurant owners who agree to partner with Eat Street are given options to maximize their revenue. We up the menu prices about $2 per meal for the outside delivery companies to help cover that 30% charge that the delivery companies charge the restaurants. So the best thing you can do as a customer is call the restaurants and ask them what service works best for them. And I did reach out to some of the other third-party delivery services to get their response on their business practices, and Grubhub got back to me, and this was their statement. They said, we'll add restaurants to our marketplace when we see local dinner demand for delivery. This is a model that other food delivery companies have been doing for years as a way to widen their restaurant supply, and we're trying it as well to create a level playing field. Jamie, thank you. Coming up in sports, the Packers start a new minority coaching program. Sports director Zach Hanley tells us which former Packer is being added to that coaching roster and enjoy the warmer temperatures tomorrow because Friday will be quite chilly. Gary will have your first worn forecast next. Junk Garden Centers are open to help you start the growing season. For a limited time, get a free bag of raised bed mix with the purchase of two. Shop now at all five Junk Garden Center locations. Get your growing season off to a safe and healthy start with Junk Garden Center. Yeah, I'm a professional remodeler, and I go to nuns. Why? Well, my clients love them because they have all those snazzy-looking countertops. You know, like beautiful marble countertops, stunning quartz slabs, you name it. To be honest, I don't see what the big deal is. I mean, who needs all that glitz and glamour from a counter? But my clients love those snazzy-looking countertops, so we go to nuns. Nuns. Kitchen, bath, and flooring. It can plunge you into deep, dark lows and can leave you feeling extremely sad and disinterested. Overwhelmed by bipolar depression? Ask about Vralar. Not all types of depression should be treated the same. Vralar effectively helps relieve all symptoms of bipolar depression with just one pill once a day. Elderly patients with dementia-related psychosis have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which may mean a life-threatening reaction, or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. Metabolic changes may occur. Nausea, restlessness, and movement dysfunction are common side effects. When bipolar depression overwhelms, ask how Vralar can help. Junk Garden Centers are open to help you start the growing season. For a limited time, get a free bag of raised bed mix with the purchase of two. Shop now at all five Junk Garden Center locations. Get your growing season off to a safe and healthy start with Junk Garden Center.
a cloudy, chilly, and showery day yesterday. Today, temperatures jump back into the 60s thanks to sunshine. Some clouds popped up this afternoon. There are a few sprinkles out there. Most of those are across Iowa and southern Minnesota. There might be a shower or two right around the Platteville area. It's possible there could be an isolated shower at some point this evening, mainly south and west of Madison, but later on, skies will clear out, and temperatures will turn cold again tonight. There's a frost advisory in effect from 3 a.m. until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning for areas north and west of Wisconsin Dells, including Juneau and Adams counties and there may be more opportunities for frost over the next few days to a week. Yesterday, temperatures just barely made it into the 50s. And last night, we briefly dropped to 32 here in Madison before temperatures rose pretty quickly after that thanks to the winds mixing up the air. So it was not a situation. Even though we got down to 32, we didn't have a widespread frost. And temperatures this afternoon made it up into the 60s. But three things you need to know in the forecast. After another pleasant day tomorrow with high temperatures in the lower 60s, Colder weather arrives beginning on Friday, lasting into at least Tuesday of next week, where high temperatures stay in the 50s. Friday, we probably won't even get out of the 40s. And then we have the possibility for frost, especially Saturday morning. Temperatures will drop into the upper 20s. Could see a widespread frost and maybe even a hard freeze in some low-lying spots. But frost is a possibility early Friday morning, as well as early Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and Wednesday morning as well. In fact, uh, the average date of the last frost is right about this time of year, May 8th. We've been as late as June 10th, but Back in 1878, our last frost occurred in late March, and temperatures didn't drop below 32 after that. We do have an alert day in the forecast for Saturday morning for that widespread frost and a hard freeze possibility. These are projected low temperatures early on Saturday morning, and you can see just about all the major reporting stations expected to be in the upper 20s. So that'll be cold enough for a widespread frost, maybe a hard freeze, especially in low-lying spots where temperatures could dip into the middle 20s. Weather track shows upper-level winds right now from the northwest. That pattern will continue through the week weekend. That'll draw down colder air through much of the northern and central parts of the country. In fact, basically about the eastern two-thirds of the country expected to see below normal temperatures. Cool weather is here right now, but even colder weather is lurking north of a front in uh, central Canada. You can see temperatures right now comfortable in the 60s, a few places where there's a little more cloud cover in the upper 50s. But on future track, the skies will clear out for tonight. For tomorrow, we'll look for partly sunny skies. And then a weather system passing to our south and west will bring in colder weather on Friday as the winds shift to the north and pick up in speed. And that'll lead to the very cold conditions by Saturday morning. Tomorrow, look for a high of 62 degrees with partly sunny skies, so a pleasant day. But as we head into Friday, a high of only 47. Frost or freeze likely Saturday night. That's why we have an alert day for uh, Saturday morning. And then you can see some chances for frost into early next week. By the end of the week, though, temperatures should be back into the upper 60s to around 70. We'll see some shower and thunderstorm chances. And coming up in sports, a UW hockey legend is back behind the bench for another year with Team USA. Who's coaching for a second straight gold? That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. This is our home. We've never seen it look quite like this. But there's no mistaking it. And it's our job to protect it. Because the best people to fight for our communities are those within them. So if you've just bought a Volkswagen, or we're thinking of buying sometime soon. We're here to help with the community-driven promise. Americans have been cutting the lawn for hundreds of years, but with TurfBot, the future of mowing is now. Our quiet, all-electric robotic mowers work around the clock to keep your lawn trimmed 24-7. That means less time spent mowing and more time spent enjoying. Equipped with LED headlights, auto-stop sensors, and anti-theft GPS devices, our mowers run safely with no supervision. Come home to a freshly mowed lawn every day for as little as $30 a week. Call today and get free installation when you sign up. TurfBot, on the cutting edge. To our Pick and Save Associates, for the long hours and late nights, for the miles traveled and the shelves restocked, for making a difference in our customers' lives, for doing so much more than your job. Everyone at the Kroger family of brands and our customers say thank you. In a time when daily life feels a bit uncertain, your hard work is keeping America fed. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. That's Ensure Max Protein with high protein and one gram sugar. It's a sit up banana, bend at the waist. I'm trying. Keep it up. You'll get there. Whoa! 
30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure max protein. Coming together makes us stronger, and Ford is built to lend a hand. Contact your Ford dealer, an essential part of your community, to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Find out more at Ford.com. Right now, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months, plus three months deferred payments on select 2020 Ford models. So you're going to want to keep an eye on the forecast if you have any plants outside. Hattie has her eyes on a possible hard freeze in the next couple of days. And we're taking a look at how life might be different for resorts in the Dells even after the state opens up. 4.30 to 7 Thursday. We'll see you then. We do have some breaking news from the Channel 3000 Alert Center. The state of Missouri plans to seek the death penalty for a man suspected of killing two brothers from Wisconsin. Garland Joseph Nelson is accused of killing Nick Diemel and Justin Diemel of Shawano County. Court records report the brothers disappeared after visiting Nelson's farm to collect a $250,000 debt. Their remains were later found in Missouri and Nebraska. Nelson pleaded not guilty on Monday. There's a new face on the Packers staff, and it's all thanks to Matt LaFleur. The Green Bay head coach established a minority coaching fellowship for young and aspiring minority coaches, and the first to hold the position is a familiar with Lambeau Field. Ruvel Martin is back with the pack and will work with the offense and assist with the receivers during his year-long fellowship. Martin played three seasons with the green and gold, catching 52 passes and six touchdowns. At Wisconsin, it's a running back fraternity of guys who ran wild at Camp Randall and then went on to play at the next level. Guys like Melvin Gordon, James White, Corey Clement, and Jonathan Taylor is the next Badger back to do so. And the best part of having guys do it before you, you can ask them advice, which is exactly what JT has been doing as he prepares for his rookie season with the Colts. I've spoken to those guys um, a bunch. Now, just asking them what they're doing. Uh, how they're training. And of course, a lot of those guys, they have off-season homes and they have, you know, personal trainers who, who they work with. So I think the biggest thing was I was just trying to see, you know, what are those guys eating? What kind of workouts are those guys doing so that, you know, you can kind of make modifications and try to implement that um, just to try to prepare for when we get that call to report. For the third straight year, UW women's hockey legend Brianna Decker has been named an assistant coach for the U.S. under-18 women's national team. And that's a smart move by USA Hockey. Since joining the coaching staff, all Team USA has done is win. They earned a gold medal in last year's Women's World Championships and a silver in 2019. In four years as a Badger, Decker tallied 244 points and scored 115 goals. In the spirit of National Nurses Day, Christian Yelich showed his support to frontline health care workers fighting COVID-19. The Brewers MVP posted this picture on Instagram asking his followers to make a jersey in their honor and let them feel the love with the hashtag Real Heroes. And the MLS returned to their practice fields today. Players across the league were allowed to work out on their team's outdoor fields. Now these were workouts that were voluntary and all individual, but it's a good thing to bring sports back. Hopefully there's some momentum. All right, that's gonna do it for us. We'll see you at 10.